They are factors that are unique uh, to the generation of young people that are growing up now. When you think about the uh, challenges with racism and the racial reckoning that we've experienced within the last two years, think about the sector of climate change, the threat of gun violence, and actual lived experience of violence that many young people are going through. These are incredibly stressful and they all contribute, I think, to the, the challenges with mental health that we're seeing today. Uh, we had an extraordinarily large fraction, uh, one in three high school students, who were saying that they felt persistent feelings of loneliness or hopelessness. That's a 40% increase in the prior decade. That's really concerning. The problem is uh, that many people are struggling with loneliness and isolation uh, today, even if they have thousands of friends on Instagram or on other social media platforms. It doesn't necessarily mean that they feel seen, heard, and understood by others. It doesn't mean that they feel they have a sense of belonging. That is incredibly important for us to cultivate right now. Is there then a loneliness epidemic that feeds into the mental health epidemic? Absolutely. I believe there is. People who struggle with loneliness have an increased risk of anxiety, depression, premature death, heart disease, sleep disturbances, dementia, and the list goes on. I think technology can be very helpful to our children. But I think if we roll out platforms without a clear understanding of the impact that they're going to have on our children, then I think we're just conducting a national experiment on our kids. And I don't think that that is something that we should be doing, given everything that we've learned already. I think that we are in diametrically opposed goals. The goals of parents out there and the goals of your company. Our kids aren't cash cows. So what I can commit to today is that no child between the ages of 10 and 12, should we ever manage to build Instagram for 10 to 12 year olds, will have access to that without their explicit parental consent. still look at mental health as something uh, to be ashamed of, something that isn't talked about uh, publicly, something that we struggle with on our own. And it doesn't have to be that way. As a society, though, we look at mental health very differently than we do physical health. We do, and that has been the part of the problem, is that for too long, we have treated mental health as somehow less important than our physical health without recognizing that mental health is part of our overall health. It's why I believe we should be investing in social-emotional learning curricula in schools, why we should be supporting young people in building healthy relationships, and why it's so important that we understand the impact of social media on our children. I feel we can change culture when it comes to mental health. And it's something that each of us can play a role in doing. It's about the conversations we have, it's about whether we choose to stand up and share our own experiences. If we don't address the stigma around mental illness, it's gonna be incredibly hard for us to make progress. You can have all the treatment in the world available, but people will not use it if they don't feel that it's okay to ask for help. So we've got to change how we fundamentally think about mental health. 